he gleaned from Lacunza and Rivera, which I'm sure he knew about. I'm sure he, as, as a, a man that went to uh, seminaries and had access to these, these uh, references dating way back, would certainly, would certainly know of these things. So, we go from the late great planet Earth to the Tim LaHaye series, Left Behind. That swept the church like a whirlwind. He probably made more money than old Lindsay ever thought he could make. You know, and Lindsay raked it in off the stupidity and ignorance of the church. He certainly did. Well, he was out there committing adultery on his wife and, and living in sin because of the sin gospel he was under. Uh, he was making a lot of money out of his uh, version of the ten horns and the, and the nations and, and all that kind of stuff, and the rapture was coming soon. Well, he's lucky that the Jesus didn't return then, and if he's still alive and breathing, he still might have a chance to repent like anybody does. But it's not likely with their hearts so seared into that false teaching, unfortunately, like so many. But like I say, Tim LaHaye, he outdid them all with his series. He... He franchised his books into a series of feature films and seminars, sponsoring it in churches and videotapes, all kinds of branded materials, and stuff like The Purpose Driven Life, where you got the coffee cups and the books and the pens and the notebooks and, and all the rest of it. And they just make a ton of money. And they, they have uh, presentations of it beamed into the churches on satellite. So needless to say, the church so-called church bought into this stuff hook, line, and sinker, kind of like the old bass going after, the, going after the lure. And they just took it in because the secret rapture was just around a corner. That was going to rescue them from all the tribulations and trials of their life and you know the, the tough times that they were going to face, uh, like there were any tough times in the 80s and 90s in America. For most people, it was a time of uh, prosperity. Now it's getting a lot worse. And since the 1900s, we can go back all the way to the 1900s and see people setting dates of the Lord's return, all these crackpots. And we had, of course, I think just recently, a guy just predicted it again here around Christmas time, Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve or something like that. You always have some crackpot has a vision, hears a voice, sees something directly in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, of that day knows no man, not even the angels of heaven, but only my father in Matthew 24, 36, but they know. Yeah, just like Joseph Smith knew when he got visited by the angel Mormi, and uh, Margaret O'Donnell knew when she had the, secret, the vision of the rapture was coming. See, these are visions and signs and wonders. You've got to test the spirits. But see, they don't test the spirits because they don't have anything to test them with because their foundation is all false doctrine. The Sandy Foundation, like Luke says in his, his version of, this, of the foundation, that you, you built your house. G Matthew said you build it on a sandy foundation and it's destroyed. It has, it has no root. Luke said you build it without a foundation. And that's what the church has done. That's what these people have done. Without a foundation, making these predictions and these visions and all this other type of stuff. And certainly that all fits right into the faith alone, the moral depravity, the substitution, the pre-forgiveness of sins. Jesus did it for you. You've got to get saved in your sins before you can obey God and, and all the rest of it that we talk about all the time in our lessons. So like I said, it's not my purpose to go into a big, huge discussion or debate on my website or my blogs about eschatology. You can post whatever you want at your discretion, certainly. And it's my discretion to delete your post if I feel so necessary to do so. All I want to do is show you the, the fraudulent teachings, where they originated, how it came about in stages down to now in the 21st century. And I'm sure there's, there's probably new films in the works and new books in the works to re-promote this stuff to the next generation of, of mind-numb, mind-dead-to-God people in the church. Um, I, th I think there's a lot of faith-based organizations that come up with things like Purpose Driven Life, and I think that, uh, that they're working on another one, that Rick Warren uh, church out there is working on another, another one of those big uh, multi-million dollar series that's going to make another big pile of money for them. Anything to keep the people in their darkness. See, the thing is, you want to be ready for Christ's return. 
It's like Jesus said. Jesus told us in Matthew 25, 13, after he told, talked about the end times, he said, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. In another passage he, in Matthew, he says, Take heed to yourself that no one deceives you. See, the many deceivers that he said going out into the world. So watch therefore, because you don't know. You don't know when he's coming in the morning or the evening or the crowing of the rooster or the morning, whenever it is. He may find you in slumber, in drunkenness, in your filthy rags that you think are going to inherit the kingdom. So I say to you, watch. That same word is guard and keep in the scriptures, meaning to, to stand as a sentinel night and day, always guarding your heart. Peter told us in 2 Peter 3.14, to he says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things. He was talking about the end, you know, where the earth would be burned up and the elements melt and all that, and the new heaven, new earth, ruled by righteousness, would reign. He says, Be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Those are the ones that will attend the marriage supper of the Lamb, folks. The ones that are going to be spot and blame, without blame by the righteous acts of the saints, like Revelation 19 talks about, verses 7 and 8. So the bride made herself ready by the righteous acts of the saints. So the thing is, is see that you'll, God is going to count you worthy of this calling that you took up your cross, that you crucified your flesh, that you denied yourself and your self-indulgence, that you plucked out that sinful eye of the flesh and cast it from you. You didn't receive the mark that this false church, this second head of the beast, is dispensing upon people, that they gladly receive as a gift, and they think it's eternal life with no, with no strings attached. In Amos, I know, I remember back in the day when they were talking about all this coming upon the church, I found a verse in Amos 5.18 that the, you that look forward to the day of the Lord, you, to you it's going to be darkness and not light. It's not going to be something wonderful and great. And I thought, well, I didn't know much about all this prophecy and all this stuff then. But I really understood what Amos was saying. All these people that were defiled in their sins, that were living dead to God, that were excusing themselves in every possible way they could, the day of the Lord, if it was going to come in the 1980s or whatever, like all these false teachers were saying, it was certainly going to be darkness to those people and not light. Paul gave us a whole dissertation in 1 Thessalonians 5 after he talked about the return of the Lord in chapter 4. In verses 1 through 10, he says, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you, for you yourself know perfectly that day will come, of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, isn't that what they promise everybody? Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Peace in their sins. What's he say right before that in Jeremiah? He says, You heal the hurt of my people slightly, saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. In other words, you're putting a band-aid over cancer, so to speak. You're not going to the root of sin and telling them they've got to crucify the flesh. So when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brethren, are not in the darkness that they should overtake you as a thief. You're sons of the light and of the day. You are not of the night or of the darkness. So don't sleep as others do. You watch. There's that word. Watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night, and fornicate, and watch pornography, and go after the, whoring after the world. It, that's what the church is doing, the so-called church. But let us not be of the day. Let's be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and in the helmet of hope of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. Remember he talks about in Ephesians 6. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the church loves that. Well, see, he hadn't appointed us to wrath. No, your children of disobedience are already under the wrath of God. But see, the wrath wasn't dispelled at the cross like you've been taught. The only way to divert that punishment on your sins is repentance and faith proven by deeds and then reconciliation through the mercy seat of Christ to have your past sins remitted. So all you need to know about this rapture theory in the stages in which it came about in the mainstream churches of the disturbed minds of people that received so-called visions and all the other stuff 
is to not get caught up in it because it only serves to distract you from already being distracted from the fundamental principles of repentance and faith proven by deeds and the free will unhindered ability of man that we should be pounding the table on in this dark day in which we face. So while they wallow in their sins, they argue about all these things and what's this verse in Daniel mean? What's that mean in Revelation? They're missing the point entirely. Because judgment is coming regardless whether it's going to be the return of Jesus Christ, the end of our, our civilization as we know it, on our planet, or you're going to face him at the judgment seat when your time is up. See, many of these false teachers have already faced him. Many more. They're getting older and older as the days go by. And we see one just recently died, uh, the big deceivers on these television networks that deceived millions upon millions of people. They faced their final judgment. Everyone will. So take heed to yourself that you be not deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time is drawing near. Therefore do not go after them. Jesus said in Luke 21, 8. It's the same thing I say. Don't go after them. If they're distracting you from the fundamental grounded message that those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity, that's your solid foundation. But understand where this stuff came from and dispense from these false teachings. Yeah, much better.